One thing you should be aware of is that most objects in the game have a health value. You can see here these chairs have been used very heavily and they're, they're quite damaged now. These ones aren't so bad, these ones are actually quite good. Now that we have uh, project group 2 completed, we can start more research. And one of the ones I'm going to pick straight away is proactive maintenance. By selecting that, things like those broken chairs are going to get taken care of without me having to actually think about it. Right at the moment, I would actually have to request maintenance. And in fact, I'll do that now because it's going to be a while before we complete the research. Once that research is done, I won't have to go and keep an eye on chairs and things anymore and they will just get fixed automatically. The other project I'm going to pick right now is the floor construction permit. Because when we move on to baggage handling and preparing for medium flights, being able to build below ground or above ground is going to be very useful. And you might notice I've hired a whole bunch of extra administrators. I'm going to put those onto, I think, repair cost reduction. Uh, yeah, no, let's see. Salary cost reduction is probably not as beneficial, except I'm not repairing things that frequently yet. So this is a definite saving, whereas the repair cost reduction is an intermittent saving. And I did confirm you can only have five administrators assigned to any one program at a time. Speaking of repairing runways and other such things, the tire marks are actually a clue. A completely healthy object, if I repair this, has no tire marks on it at all. But the more degraded they get, the more tire marks you can see. So this one's down to 34% and the runway is down to 34%. If I repair that now, all those marks will go away. So if you want to get a quick overview and think, oh, what, what do I need to repair next? Well, that one, that one, maybe this one. And I'm actually doing this earlier than you strictly need to. Um, when automated repairing is switched on later on, it happens at around 25%. So doing it at 33 or 29, it's a little early th earlier than needed, but it does improve your satisfaction from your airlines. So somewhere in here is the airline infrastructure quality. So the fact I'm using concrete gives them a high rating, but if it degrades too much, they will drop that rating and they won't be happy and happy airlines aren't inclined to give you as many flights. Sorry, unhappy airlines aren't as inclined to give you as many flights. If you ever find yourself wishing you'd picked a different project, be aware you can click on it and pause one of your current projects. Click to start a new project and let's say Let's say I wanted to start on remote stand service. I could start that project, let it finish, and when it's done, I could go back to floor construction and resume, and it will actually carry on from where you left off. You don't have to start again. With proactive maintenance finished, I'll now pick the next one, and it's going to be... Hmm going to be night flights. Now, I had to think carefully about that because I know I'm maxing out the number of flights I can have at the moment anyway, but with progressing up to medium flights and um, the larger and the larger commercial flight permits, we're going to end up with 75 and then um, 200 and possibly even more flights per day. 
being able to fit all of that into just the daylight hours is actually very difficult. So opening up the night hours is useful. Maybe not useful just yet, but it will be very useful soon. With proactive maintenance research, you do have to switch on both of those choices. So switch on cleaning service and repairs. I didn't actually stop to look for one of these, but this one might be um, damaged enough to warrant servicing. I'm not sure what the trigger is. It might be when it gets down to the red zone. Let's see if we can find one. appear to have any that are in the red right now but I suspect that's the trigger as soon as it gets to the red point it will get repaired automatically. It does not however automatically repair your runways or your stands. Those are still manually repaired at this point in time. In order to switch on that sort of automatic repair you have to have the right executive staff. At the moment my staff board is still empty. I haven't hired any of these positions yet, but you'll see one of them. Yes, here we go. So the chief operating officer enables auto repair of structures. Now I'm still going to hold off on that because that is part of the tutorial we'll be getting to later, but I just wanted to point it out now because it relates to maintenance and I didn't want you to get the two mixed up. Okay, time to pick some more projects. Program group two, once again, leads to project group three. Project group three, I don't find as useful as project group two, because by the time you can get to project group three, you've probably done a large portion of the available research projects anyway. Now there's not a whole lot of reasoning behind why I've picked advanced runway lighting, it was just an option that I don't believe is part of the tutorial, so I'm just filling out those options at the moment. As mentioned, I don't find Project Group 3 quite as useful, because as you can see I'm already running quite low on projects that I can pick without straying back into the tutorial, so we shall be moving on to the actual tutorial quite soon. Similarly, I don't find the first option of Program Group 2 to be that useful, because by the time you've got this option, reducing project time isn't that dramatic anyway. Now, if you've spent a lot of time looking at the interface already, you might have noticed there's no data found down here for the weather data. That's because we don't have a weather station yet. If we go to airline infrastructure, weather station, I'm going to skip straight past the small one and go for the large. And you can see it's actually not that large at all. If we look at the small one, that's one square compared to two squares. And I'm just going to tuck this somewhere out of the way, such as this little gap here. Once it's built, you can see it now tells me what the temperature is, what the wind speed is. Um, I think it will show you the direction somewhere. Ah, yeah. 225 degrees, that's the wind direction. I am assuming north is zero, so 225's coming from the west. Now 
Now this information is pretty more than it's useful. If you're playing somewhere with snow, it will warn you about upcoming snowstorms and that sort of thing. But for where I've placed this particular airport, that's not likely to be a worry. And because I want more flights, I'm going to pick the extended commercial license next. You don't have to have medium stands for that. You just need to have this research so that you can have more flights per day. Uh, all you really need to do is build the medium-sized air traffic control tower. In preparation for medium and large flights, I'm going to proceed with building up my research for medium fuel depots and larger trucks. Because even the little mag Maverick trucks we have right now are pretty terrible when it comes to trying to fill up a large plane. <laughs> 